Right, guys. Welcome back. Hello. <laughs> We're here. Back again. <laughs> You're quite nervous. It's been a while. I know. We just said this before we started. Yeah. We said, why are we so nervous? Like, this is not normal. Like, no. we need to stop. Like, come on. We're not nervous. Like, breath. why are we nervous? I think because we haven't had a chance to film for a while. So we've been really busy and now we're back in the hot seat. Again, yeah, I feel like every time we have a bit of a break from filming, we get here and we're like, oh what do we do yeah nerves massively kick in imposter syndrome massively kicks in yes you heard it here <laughs> <laughs> but today oh my goodness we are on season two i know we're season two yeah episode, episode one, one. Yeah. wow how, how have we like come here it's like crazy. so quick it's come so quickly hasn't it if you think about it it's mad like we're already on season two and yeah. i also don't feel like it's been long enough. <laughs> no, it hasn't. But we're kicking off season two with a really special episode looking yeah. at female hormones, women's hormones, our menstrual cycle, and how that impacts our mental health and well being. And also what steps we can take to maybe counteract some of the side effects that we get from our increasing and decreasing hormone levels. Yeah, I think this is a big big topic isn't it for us as well i feel like we all as women struggle with this i mean it's our it's, we're human beings we all have it you know it's it's kind of just realizing that it's normal and we're not just like having a bad week or we you know we're going through stress and everything else i just feel like recognizing how bad our body works and how important our cycle is in our life and how that will affect the weeks in you know the whole cycle and just being a little bit more aware how to prepare yourself you know when you are going through your cycle and that it's normal that you're not going to perform the same that you're not going to be at your best you know you're not maybe gonna have brain fog you're gonna be tired all of these little things that I think that we kind of like not not like criticize ourselves for it but just we feel like we're not quite there and good enough in yeah. that week and just we put a lot of pressure on ourselves i think a woman a lot of women do criticize themselves yeah i if i think back to when i was a teenager thinking about my hormonal cycle back then i had no idea what it was obviously you know that you start your periods and you get like mm. such a small bit of information in school or from your parents or from whoever I just don't think nobody prepares you for it and no. it's not until really recently that I've properly understood my cycle and the fluctuations and we are completely different to men in terms of you know just the fluctuations that we have and the different hormones that we have and I think you know, when I was younger, you, you tend to label yourself as, you know, erratic, the, you, the mood swings that you have. And I think if you don't understand that, you can start to internalize a lot of those behaviors and feel as though it's a personality trait rather than yeah. a hormonal fluctuation. Yeah, 100%. And that comes into, every, you know, our cycles can also change, you know, they can be a little bit different than in your 20s to when you get to your 30s or your 40s. And I feel like, you know, recognizing that it it's a normal process in your life that that's what happens. And not be so hard on yourself. You know, it's, it, we don't perform the same. We do not perform the same when we're going throughout cycle. And neither do we probably have a very small window, you know, in the month where we feel the best yeah. and we feel like we can go and take on the world and do this and do that. And what we tend to do as women, pack everything in that one week or two weeks where we feel our best. And then we forget that that will be, will just lead us to being exhausted when it comes to building up to our cycle again, because it's very short lived if you think about it by the time you know where you're back again and you know it's you don't have a long period of time yeah. where you can adjust to it it's back to again your cycle yeah. and you know 
it's really recognizing as well where you are in your cycle and mm. for me you know tracking it massively i know for you as well as help yeah just identify you know if you are like you said having a really bad day it's quite easy if you start tracking those symptoms to think oh actually this is a similar time to last month it could be to do with my fluctuating hormones and it almost takes that pressure off you and and gives you almost a, an outlet like mm -hmm. a an excuse that it's not just yourself you're not just having a bad day you're not just a failure you know for example like you said brain fog memory loss all comes part and parcel of your fluctuating cycle mm -hmm. and i think it's a running joke isn't it with with our group of friends that we say oh we get one week two if you're lucky oh yeah of actually feeling great and thinking you look good or your skin's clear or you know, I don't know about you, but you feel as though you, you can put on such a lot of weight. It's just yeah. depending on what week you're on in your cycle. It's it's crazy. Or you just feel like just bloated and just not very nice and, and everything that comes with it. It's like we were speaking before, you know, you just know, like I would be having a conversation with you and like, oh, I'm feeling this and I'm, I feel like crying and I feel so stressed. And, and then I literally send her another message and be like, oh. I'm due, yeah, literally yeah. in one day. So now we know what's going on. But it's like, even although I am very, very like organized with it, like I track everything, like I try to stay on top of it. Even I sometimes forget and I even can get into that mindset where I'm just thinking, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to forget, you know, that so quickly it comes around again. And it's so important, I think, for women to recognize the week before, you know, the run up to your cycle that you you know you're going to go through a lot of mood swings and a lot of changes and you know like you said your skin might not feel great you might not feel great you'll feel tired your body's kind of getting you prepared for your cycle to take it a little bit easy yeah. and take a step back and get yourself ready for what your body's going to go through because Think about it. It's a lot going on. And, you know, however long your cycle is, like for my my cycles are longer than a week. So I basically in the month, I've got hardly any time. Like I've got if two, two weeks, if I'm lucky. Yeah. Of just some normality in my life where I can just breathe a little bit and not feel like something's wrong with me or that I'm super anxious. That's another thing, like anxiety. My anxiety levels go up yeah. so much when I'm due. I, I just don't know what to do with myself. And it's all part and parcel driven by the hormones that are released. You know, we've got mm. over 50 hormones in our body, if not more, that, you know, are responsible for regulating all of our different bodily functions, our emotions and you know the stress hormone for example is really closely linked to our reproductive cycle yeah. but really when we're thinking about those kinds of the four four weeks generally on average we're thinking about yeah you've got your period week generally where all of our hormone levels are kind of low they're all dropped it's kind of shedding the lining mm. and then the week after that you know you're in your follicular stage then you really start to see those estrogen progesterone levels yeah. rising that's when you're starting to feel a little bit better and then the week after ovulation is when estrogen's at its peak now estrogen is really linked to you know feeling good your skin's glowing it releases collagen that's you're when ready. you're at your best yeah <laughs> you're ready during that week of ovulation you do you feel great don't you you want to take on the world and if you could bottle that feeling up yeah that would be great but then after that we see a really sharp decline in estrogen and progesterone then rises but progesterone is responsible for kind of your oil production so this is where people get a lot of breakouts but with the drop in estrogen you also get a drop in serotonin, which is your happy hormone. So mm. estrogen and serotonin are really closely linked, which is why people get that drop in mood or the fluctuation in mood as well. And I think it's really important, like you said, to recognize that it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It just means that that's a point in your cycle where actually your body is naturally going through a process where it's regulating itself, it's preparing itself for reproduction. Mm. And, you know, we have to kind of 
just give ourselves some acknowledgement of that and and take steps to put in self-care strategies they're going to be different depending on where you're at with your cycle because it's so closely linked yeah and I think it's just like again being a bit more self-aware and thinking well I am gonna just give myself a bit of a break and not give myself a hard time maybe if I'm not performing well like I can give you an example of the gym or exercising or if there's any ladies out there that love to go to the gym and have like a really you know good routine with that you know you're not gonna feel your best when you're doing this and you can really beat yourself up in the gym and be like oh today I didn't do so well and there's not enough recognition about it in a way of like well it's fine I've still made it I'm still doing the best I can but I also have to recognize that I am you know, coming towards my cycle, or maybe you are in the middle of your cycle and you're trying to still exercise. And I, you know what, hat off to the women that can do that because I personally can't physically exercise when I am in the middle of my cycle. It's just not, doesn't work for me. It makes it worse. But, you know, when I look at women that do make the effort to go and exercise, I just think, wow, like that must be so hard because I know all of the symptoms and everything that comes with it. And it just makes you think that just having that tiny bit of just, it's fine, you know, it's okay. Like you said, maybe have something in place where maybe the week that you're in your cycle, maybe you give yourself a little bit of a break and do more activities that don't involve you don't involve like exhausting your body yeah, in like a way vigorous exercise and i think you know it's really really important that we think about kind of the the things that help us release the happy hormones so the things that help us boost our serotonin for example or our oxytocin mm. or our dopamine levels and exercise is really closely linked to all of those but like you say it doesn't have to be mm. vigorous exercise because you know, you've got your happy hormones that are linked really closely to your reproductive hormones. So if you've got a drop in your reproductive hormones, you're going to have a drop in your happy hormones, which is what makes you feel generally rubbish, tired, you know, lethargic. Mm. Brain fog is a huge one for me, you know, right before that kind of the cycle begins. I, I struggle terribly with like, I forget people's names. And I don't know about you, but you were actually saying you forgot what you done yesterday. Literally. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's not just associated with just a busy lifestyle. That is yeah. massively connected to our hormones because they, you know, they're driven by neurotransmitters. So actually we see brain changes in certain regions of the brain so connected to like planning problem solving memory attention and focus are all so closely linked to our hormonal cycle so actually when you you forgot someone's name who you've known for 20 years <laughs> there's a really good reason for it <laughs> yeah that's what yeah. i tell myself i'm john <laughs> it's a good reason for it so it's really coming back to kind of exercise and stuff. I think it's really important that you find something that works for you because you still want to be boosting your serotonin and your dopamine levels. So mm. a really good way of boosting those two in particular is sunshine, getting outside for a walk, yeah. vitamin D, not that we get enough sunshine oh, here. God. <laughs> it's, but it's back to winter guys, yeah. we're back to winter now. Tell by our, our attire. <laughs> our outfits is back to winter in the middle of summer. Yeah. <laughs> But for, for you, for example, it doesn't even have to be sunny, but going for a walk and just getting natural UV light can be a really good way mm. of that mood enhancing without actually being able to physically work out be- yeah. because you're on. Also, think about the little things that you enjoy. What are your little things that you do? I don't know, when you want to have a little pamper night or the things that bring joy to you maybe do those little things in your cycle that will help boost you know all of the happy hormones in your body that you can just sit and be like okay yeah you know I know I'm going through it but at least this is making me feel a bit better and you know in a way kind of preparing yourself for as well and not you know just panic and do all these things all of a sudden get into a routine where you go, okay, well, let me just plan these things, you know, when I'm not in my cycle and I'll give myself a break just in that cycle where I just 
do a bit more self-care yeah and it helps it massively helps and the reason behind it is because it releases dopamine so dopamine is our reward and our pleasure hormone so it's really closely linked to things that make us feel good so in the sense of that though it can be a double-edged sword because what you see a lot of and this is the really good thing to notice actually patterns in yourself when our dopamine levels dip just before we're due on our period they dip with our um estrogen levels you start to seek out more instantaneous levels of rewards so thinking about scrolling for example we've spoke about this quite a lot it gives you that dopamine hit so you but it's it's almost like a fake dopamine hit because actually you get in that instantaneous gratification so that your brain expects it more quickly and you can find yourself just hooked in that scrolling cycle or maybe something you know a, another kind of maybe not so positive reward based activity so it's important to kind of find something that actually serves you well but still gives you that pleasure yeah and also i think diet is a big one (laughs) (laughs) she's just looked at me sorry she's just looked at me then and then she was waiting if i was gonna say something and i really really did well there didn't i (laughs) just looked her dead in the eye and said nothing i was like yeah 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 (laughs) so something else (laughs) diet is really important i think it's massive if you think about it obviously when we go in through our cycle it's hard isn't it it's really hard if you think the days before you just your diet's not your diet anymore that you normally have like we can all just be truthful about that and notice that it's really difficult and you know even with me with my sweet tooth i normally don't have a sweet tooth but when i i am due on oh my goodness it's that's when it's happening and that's another little sign to know that's coming and that you're not it's not that you're just sitting there just eating loads of sweets and chocolate and just you know Mm. snacking of rubbish food i actually think that i want to remind women that it's normal to feel like that and it's it's, so normal and it's also we actually have to like have an intake more calories when we're on our period and i think a lot of women beat themselves up about that oh i've eaten too many calories on my period and is this no you need it you actually if if there's one time you need to eat more calories it's on your period and also there's also a hormonal explanation for that as well it, your serotonin levels drop and your serotonin levels are responsible for appetite as well. So your serotonin levels drop, your appetite increases to, to try and boost them. So mm. there, there's lots of different things going on in your body on a cellular level that a lot of people associate with, with kinds of behavioral changes. And I think that's when it starts to impact you, your mental health in a, such a way. You know, it's not just linked to kind of you drop in your happy hormones but actually what that then does is starts us into that cycle of that criticism that negative thinking that beating ourselves up oh i haven't exercised or oh, i've far too much oh you know my face is you know, i've broken out and I, I don't like the way i look and it can be really really damaging because yeah. those words that we speak to ourselves are so powerful in terms of building our sense of self. And if we're kind of repeatedly going through that negative cycle every couple of weeks, it can quickly start to become a habit and that yeah. can really impact our mental health. Well, it's a health. pattern, isn't it? Yeah. So you, whenever you start feeling like that, you go back into that pattern and it's just, and then it's just like a vicious cycle, isn't it? That you constantly find yourself, that you're not speaking kindly to yourself or you've got low self-esteem because you know you're in your cycle which you know it's a such a normal thing that we go through as women i think that that's one thing that i wish more women wouldn't criticize themselves as much when they are going through them changes and like we're going back to diet for example like i don't know about you but i the first at least three days of my cycle will only snack on literally anything and everything Mm -hmm. I don't have a diet where it's like nutritional, like 
any good for me but then because physically that appetite is gone for like the good foods i just want a snack and just up like up my calories yeah and carb load and yeah and comfort eat and-, and then it's like a little it almost it's like a little peak isn't it and then then you start maybe in the middle of your cycle to feel the need that you need to nourish your body a little bit more and it happens every single month with me and I can see the pattern and now what I've done I'm so much more self-aware that when I do get into that two three days of just snacking I don't beat myself up about it at all and I just think of it you know what my body's going through a lot you know there's a lot of women out there that have a lot of heavy periods as well because that's another thing that can you know change the way you feel in your cycle you know some women can have you know a light period like normal or heavy you know we're all different and I think you need to acknowledge how your body reacts to and what your body going through and not you know constantly beat yourself up yeah. it's just you, just it's, be kinder to yourself it's so important to to track I cannot recommend it enough yeah you know even kind of going through the the training that I've gone through I still did not ever kind of understand hormones until I started tracking my own cycle you get taught the basics but like you say everybody is so unique mm. and so different and I cannot stress enough how important it is as well to really understand and you know hack your hormones as they say because eating is such an important part of that I feel massively um, and feel so strongly about supplementing with vitamins and minerals magnesium was a game changer for me and magnesium is so kind of closely linked to regulating these types of hormones that are important in your cycle but also in your mood fluctuations and i think magnesium is such kind of the, the, such widespread depletion in women in the 30s and early 40s yeah. and a lot of that depletion people can mistake for perimenopausal sim- symptoms yeah and you know just supplementing with really good quality vitamins and minerals can alleviate quite a lot of those symptoms yeah 100 percent. and i i've my little routine when i'm i know my cycle my cycle is coming I, what I do, I take vitamin, like vitamins, like especially the bees and iron. Like if you are a woman that does like bleed a lot in their during, during her cycle, it's so important that maybe the week before you do, you're a bit more self-aware and do prepare your body for what's about to happen. I think that's so important for me. I was taking vitamins like on a daily basis, but I wasn't really tracking what I'm taking. It was more like a multivitamin and I was just taking a daily. But since I've done a little bit more research and how, and also, you know, being a bit more aware of my own cycle, because like you said, we're all different. What I've noticed in my cycle that I had to up my iron and my bees just before my cycle so yes still take my supplements on a daily basis throughout the whole month but the week before just getting that my body just a little bit more prepared and it it does make a massive difference and we've had this conversation today earlier on and I've noticed for me caffeine for me like I've not had coffee now that today was the first coffee that I had in a whole week and it made such a massive impact. And I, the only reason I'm mentioning coffee, because I think, I mean, probably pretty, pretty much 90% of people have coffee. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a, a massive one when you are going through your cycle, especially if you're having on an empty stomach. Think about it. You're having a coffee on an empty stomach. You're due on as well. Everything is just so up and down. Your anxiety can go through the roof. You know, you can actually physically bleed more when you have Mm. caffeine intake. That's what I've noticed. And what I've done now is just cutting a little bit more caffeine while I am through my cycle, which has helped me so much, honestly. And I know it's hard because I felt like half the times I was asleep and (laughs) didn't know what's going on. But it did work in a way of helping my body to not go through that trauma of constantly you know not only that I'm going through it but then I'm making it worse with yeah. things that I'm doing in in my day-to-day like coffee you know that's my routine first thing in the morning 
I get a coffee. So it's one of them things that maybe if there's women out there that you do struggle, it's maybe a little thing to take in consideration that just a little change like this could help you like it helped me. Yeah. And that's massively just being aware of your own yeah. body and your symptoms, isn't it? I think, you know, it's so important as well that men understand this. And I feel a lot of women are labeled and targeted as moody yeah and and you know they're given these kind of oh, i don't know just negative perceptions like what's wrong with you yeah. what's what why or are you psycho. like this yeah yeah i think that's you see that's and that it's hard it's hard i'm gonna you know it's one of them things it's hard for men to understand because they do not go through that cycle okay they don't have that week where they are struggling with this so in a way i do understand but at the same time you know women have been on this planet for a very long time and we've all had to deal with this and by now there should be a little bit more awareness about in how the cycle goes and how a woman feels about herself first of all, throughout a cycle and how she performs, if you think about it. So I think, you know, husbands, partners, brothers, any male figure out there that, you know, is surrounded by women, I think you have to understand that this is just a, a thing that we go through every month. It's really hard for us to keep on top of everything on top of our cycle as well and keep sane at the same time. And it's just a little thing to notice that when your woman does go through your her cycle or even the week prior to her cycle to just be a little bit kinder to her maybe just be like do you need anything is there anything little gestures like this can make such a difference for a woman especially like mm. just having your partner honestly it's as simple as this having your partner coming home knowing that you do on with loads of chocolates and treats for you <laughs> without you asking <laughs> this is very important without asking just arrive home with just a little gesture like that or anything that can make it helpful for her we're not saying you know do everything we're just saying like little things like that that can give that happy hormone to a woman yeah. you know to help her absolutely agree i think this stems a lot from that taboo and that stigma about periods not being spoken about yeah and, and i think that's still now to this day like a lot of people feel really uncomfortable about talking about periods yeah i am and, though i'm 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 guilty of yeah. it when i when i go for example if i go to a class or and bear in mind, we're surrounded by women everywhere. So there's absolutely no need for me to be uncomfortable to talk about this. I still, to this day, sometimes don't want to say I'm on. Yeah. Because I'm just like, oh, I don't want to mention it. Yeah. And what, what, why are we like this? Why, why are we so scared to mention but that we're on? It's taboo, isn't it? And it, it, like yeah. you say, it comes back to stigma and the thought of, you know, keeping up appearances if you like and i think that massively plays into this lack of understanding from from all people you know we're not just bashing men here it's kind of like i said i didn't fully understand the cycle and you don't really get to grips with your fluctuating moods or how it impacts your mental health or even your performance like mm -hmm. you say and i think people do really struggle cognitively with hormonal fluctuations 100%. as well i don't think it matters what age you are or what time in your cycle you are our hormones fluctuate that dramatically that it can have such a quick effect and it can leave people feeling as though they're not themselves they don't recognize themselves and that can be such a massive it will it can take such a massive toll on relationships oh, yeah. and this is why i think this level of understanding it needs to be spoken about more it has to be you know just the norm that we speak about these things it's a normal day-to-day -day part of life yeah well i had you know we're not going back to bashing men because we're not but i'm just saying like i've heard men talk about oh periods oh how disgusting you've got to remember that the only reason that we can reproduce in this world and you can have beautiful children and generations is because of that so we need to kind of you know drop that stigma of just like oh periods are gross and periods of this and that it's normal if we didn't have them we wouldn't be able to reproduce in life and that's just 
our human body that it's a normal it's our life and that's what we have to understand that it's nothing gross about it it's actually really healthy for a woman to have a period and not a lot of people are educated about periods what is a period why do women have to bleed it's a basically a process of clearing yourself and just kind of giving your body a reset for reproducing for you know for your next couple of weeks and i think a big one as well is contraceptive pill or or or, you know some other form of the implant or the coil because it's artificial hormones it it interferes with your your cycle i i mean we're not here to give medical advice whatsoever you know it's it's completely individual and you know obviously go under the recommendation of your doctor but i could never take the pill at all and i think you know when i think back actually to when i was like late teens my doctor prescribed it for me for heavy periods same here i i look back at that period in my life and i just think wow i feel as though i was so up and down and erratic and i know that comes with age Mm. but i feel like a lot of it was down to a dysregulated cycle and and trying to to regulate it with artificial hormones yeah i I mean i'm in the same boat with you i can't take the pill i can't i've tried it plenty of them i've been on all sorts of pills to try and regulate my heavy periods and everything and again you know the first time i've been to the doctors that's again like you said i've been prescribed a pill for my heavy periods and i think again taken so many different pills there's a lot of they're all different so that again it's it's hard and it's really bad for your body if you think about it there was no sort of like maybe checks to see your hormonal level at the time when you do get put on the pill to see what could maybe be suitable for you you know you just get given pills and you just hope for the best and see what works and i think that again is a little bit of an awareness that you know not every pill will work for everyone and sometimes it needs to be a little bit more awareness of how much you have to check your hormonal levels before you go into this journey of taking the pill but also the side effects like i've had so many problems while i've been taking the pill i nearly went into surgery i had to stop the pill and it was horrendous and i had so many side effects and i just thought all of this because i've started on the pill to stop something that You know, it's again, a natural cycle of mine. And I think over the years, I've grown to understand that this is me and this is my cycle and I have to just accept it. Um, For me personally, obviously everyone's different. For me, just not being on the pill is the best outcome for me. And it helps me in a way of controlling how my my hormones and and how, how you feel. Exactly. And... Also, not having to worry about all these side effects that comes with a pill. It's dangerous at times, actually. It is. Do you know, I think it's so important that if you are struggling with your well-being, maybe you're feeling low, maybe, you know, you're not feeling great or you're not feeling yourself. There could be so many different causes behind it. But I think a main point should be to start with thinking about your hormones and thinking about starting to regulate your hormones and you know looking at any kind of artificial hormonal replacement that you're on obviously out you know it's completely different when you get to menopause because hormonal replacement in that Mm. sense can actually be really beneficial so we're just generalizing across the board here but you know thinking about okay well what could be impacting my hormone levels i think stress is such a big one. So cortisol is the stress hormone, has a direct impact on our serotonin levels, our dopamine levels, and you know how we regulate our emotions and our behaviors. And I think not a lot of people understand the impact that that can have. Mm. And stress is such a huge contributing factor to our physical health as well. Yeah, I think, well, think about it when you go to the doctors, if you look back, what's the first question they ask you? If you go with the problem of, I don't know what's happening, my cycle is not regular anymore, something's happening. The first thing they ask you, 
have you had a stressful period in your time, like in the last couple of months, is the first thing that affects you straight away. It goes straight to your hormones. And it's the, the question that everyone asks you and you just go, well, yeah, yeah, I've been a bit more stressed and there's been a lot of things that changed in my life. That also changes your cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that women realize that, that, you know, going through hard things in your life, stress, change, everything can affect your hormones. And we, we're not aware of it because we just think that, oh, we're just, it's just my period. It's not just your periods. Everything is linked to it. Yeah, it's a whole biological system. And yeah. And if we look at all of the, the more recent studies now looking into the connections between mental health and physical health, inflammation across your body and in, on a cellular level is the root cause of the vast majority of chronic disease. And inflammation is caused by a dysregulation in your hormones, predominantly by cortisol release and other stress hormones that go alongside it. Because in large doses and large quantities, that they're toxic to, yeah. to all of the cellular processes that happen in your body. So I think it's so important that we learn to be able to regulate our emotions. So if we take our happy hormones, for example, we can think about things to boost them naturally. So your serotonin is your happy hormone. So that's the one that kind of keeps you, you know, happy and pleasurable and things like, you know, natural sunlight that we said before, exercise is really good for that. Your diet, so rich in magnesium, leafy greens, all has such a massive impact on increasing your serotonin levels. So um, just little steps like this, I feel like the more aware you are, it's always... again, we go back to the more aware you are of your cycle and how you as an individual, you know, react to your cycle and how you are, the more you'll have a better understanding. And again, like you said, you know, when you're younger, you're not really aware of it and you're not tracking your cycle as much, even although you're tracking to know when you're coming on, which is a complete difference to knowing exactly what's going on you know just being just oh yeah i'm due in a couple of days is different to actually tracking yeah, your and every day your hormones and are. what happens the week before mm -hmm. what happens the week after what happens in between is very important and i think again with both of us having children again that can kind of like change your outlook on your cycle as well because you're a little bit more aware and a lot of things change in your body again that you know having children can change that a lot like your cycle might not be the same like it was before children like mine changed an awful lot in fact mine changed for the first year after having children and then it went back to yeah. what it was normally like so it can always fluctuate depending on your life and your lifestyle and what's you know what's the events in your yeah. life and what's been happening it's just important to just pay more attention to it because it's a little bit more intricate than yeah. just a period but you know? also when you start to understand it and when you start to track it and you're a bit more aware of where you are and what your hormones are doing at that particular moment in time you're more likely to be able to take steps to improve it so Say so you, you boost your serotonin levels, but you've also got your dopamine levels, which is what we spoke about earlier, your reward, doing nice things. So it might be that you, you don't feel like exercising, but actually you can go for a walk and socializing with our friends or our family or loved ones is a really big one that releases oxytocin, which is another happy hormone. So things like physical comfort, hugs, you know, spending time with animals or those things that generate that that kind yeah. of feel good, lovey hormone. And then you've got your endorphins as well. So anything that releases your endorphins, stop looking at me like that. Uh-oh. It's also a really good day. Of your, you mentioned your endorphins and I just I went, Ooh. So, you know, pleasurable activities, exercise. Spending yeah. more time with your partner. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's really important. And that's why we said about the awareness for men as well. I think it's so important that, you know, 
you spend that quality time with your other half. And we don't mean just like in the bedroom. We just mean, you know, give them more hugs, you know, pay more attention to the little things that can make them feel happy. And all of these little things in small doses can help a woman in her cycle to feel better about herself and boost, you know, the happy home hormone. You don't have to, because there's a very little that a woman can do through a cycle that's not going to be hard, you know, and make her exhausted or, you know, smash the gym and do this and do that. So it's really important that you guys do realize this and just make these little changes and trust me you'll see the difference i feel like like you've just said then like small gestures it's yeah. just building up that connection and i feel like a lot of the time when we are feeling down we're not feeling ourselves we can become quite introverted and we can remove ourselves away from human connection we, we talk about this a lot on our previous episodes yeah. you know isolating ourselves for various different reasons our hormones can play into that but also how we feel about ourselves so our self-esteem everything is linked our physical health and our mental health is so closely linked and it's important that we're able to take steps to improve it so small repeated gestures of connection actually mm. really boosts those happy hormones oxytocin endorphins dopamine all of those reward chemicals just by small acts of kindness from yeah. a loved one also like you know you can be a little bit more snappy on your periods and you can go because you're going through a lot there's a, there's like trauma to your body well, basically it's linked so closely to your emotional regulation yeah. system and you know as you said before earlier on we can be labeled as moody and oh what's wrong with her and all of this you know maybe if you need to have serious conversations about something maybe do wait until your partner is not on her period mm -hmm. and wait for the right time in a way when she's not at her lowest in the cycles because i think that's really important one thing that i have done recently is not have those important really hard conversations when your mind is not clear you can't possibly have a conversation like that when you're not even okay yourself and this goes into when you go through a stressful time in your life it's the same with hormones you know you need to know when to give yourself break and know when is the right time to be able to be capable to have this conversation because yeah. you might have a reaction to that conversation that you wouldn't have if you were not on your period. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's so true. It doesn't sound ridiculous at all because actually there's neuroscientific research to back that up. Yeah. So actually there's brain imaging that shows the neural circuits in our brain are activated differently depending on the time of the month that we're at. So really when you're in that luteal stage, that preparing for your period, that week before you bleed and during your bleed, actually the circuits in our brain that are responsible for memory, for planning, for you know organization, focus and attention aren't as activated because of the decrease in, in hormonal yeah. neurotransmitters. But that and makes sense. That makes sense if you think about it. Like it kind of just proves that that's why, mm -hmm. you know, we are not feeling our best. And that's why we do have weeks in our cycle where we perform better than other weeks. And I think what this episode is about, it's more of the self-awareness around it and just understanding what level you are in your cycle and what you could do about it slowly obviously we understand that nothing happens overnight if you're not used to tracking your cycle it's gonna take a while again it's a cycle you know it takes a while until you know ha what happens every month and sometimes it changes sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's not the same but by tracking it uh, you know for a longer period of time then you know what will happen and what could potentially yeah. happen and there's so many apps out there you know that don't have to pay a subscription every month that can really really help you to track your cycle and help women get a better understanding of the cycle every month yeah and it's about just getting into the habit 
And once you're into that habit, you start to notice patterns then. Yeah. And it, it just helps you take ownership, like you say. It, it helps you take back control and be able to put things into place that may mitigate yeah. some of those really rubbish times that we all go through. So I think just to kind of wrap it up, just to summarize exactly what you've just said, it's just about raising awareness and also thinking about improving our self-care and our yeah. kindness to ourselves and one another. Yeah, 100%. We're definitely going to pick up on this subject again. I think it's really important. Like we've only covered a little bit of the whole, you know, subject of cycles, um, but we will pick up on it probably in next episode. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, just be more kinder to yourself, girlies out there. I think it's really important. And for men out there, again, just make sure you take notice of your woman cycle, have a conversation with her when she is going, being a little bit more aware when she's due on or not. And just make those little kind gestures to just make it easier, yeah. you know, for her. And I think I would just finish by saying, let's talk about it. Let's open the conversations. Yeah, why not? Let's not shy away from, you know, those conversations around cycles or where we're at just be open and honest particularly if you've got children educate them talk about hormones because it's not something that's on the curriculum in schools yeah. in enough depth to be able to understand it yeah and with that guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you next time yeah any questions please no. drop us a message and we also ask that you like and share our episodes. It goes a long way. But thank you for listening. I know. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.